Welcome, everyone. You're listening to episode 10 of Armin and Man Moment and Airman's podcast. I'm Sergeant Rolls, and I'll be hosting this week's episode. Today, we have two guests with us, Master Sergeant Ashley Broadnecks and Staff Sergeant Ashley Long. The two of them are here to talk about the Enlisted Association of the Arkansas National Guard and what it has to offer our enlisted force. Thanks for coming in today, guys, and sharing this info with us. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. Professional. <laughs> I oh, like it. Well, <laughs> it's my radio voice. <laughs> um, okay, so real quick, uh, what role do each of you guys fill for this association? Um, well, this is Ashley Broadnax. So my role, I kind of play a few different roles. At a state level, I'm the first vice president of the state level association. Um, then we also have an area. So the next step up, I'm actually the chair, so there's seven states within our area. Just to let you know, it's Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, and Kansas. So within all those states, I hold a chair position. Mm -hmm. And then at the national level, because I am a chair, I am on the executive board. In addition to currently the fitness committee chairperson, so that's what I do. She does a lot. I see that. (laughs) Um, Okay, so for myself, I'm on the Junior Enlisted Committee for next year's conference. I'm the air lead, and we also have my counterpart. He's an Army lead. Um, And then there's a couple other of us in the committee, but that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm sure everyone's heard of the Enlisted Association of the Arkansas National Guard. We see the emails, we see the flyers, all kinds of pushes to share information. But what exactly is it? So it's real simple. Our vision, mission is, uh, and I'm just going to read exactly because it's going to sum everything up, Um, works to improve and protect the benefits of the men and women serving in the National Guard and their families. So literally the association, both at a state level and the national level, is here for us. And not just us, the ones that serves, but our families. Because what happens to us while we're deployed, um, or even if something happens to us, unfortunately, death, it's going to affect our families no matter what. So everything that we do is not just for the members serving, but also the family. So what is kind of the history of, of Ingus? And so surprisingly enough, we say a long time. Um, the national office, believe it or not, was started in 1970, wow. um, but was not incorporated or actually organized until 1972. And... <laughs> Who would have guessed Mississippi would have started this? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm from Mississippi, so now I have something to be proud of. Absolutely. I mean, also, Mississippi is a great state to visit. So. <laughs> well, my mom lives there, so yeah, I agree, I agree. <laughs> but um, they're the ones that started, so Jackson, Mississippi, it was a bunch of NCOs, and they're just like, you know what, this isn't fair. Why aren't we getting these benefits like the active duty? And that's literally how it was established. And then the state of Arkansas did not chapter or incorporate until um, 1996. Are you serious? Absolutely. The the year I was born. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I know. (laughs) And I was graduating high school. So, (laughs) but um, so really the state, now we did, we were active, but we didn't chapter until then. So um, we worked a lot with the uh, Officers Association, but we didn't actually chapter until 1996. So we're a little late to the game there. Absolutely. There you go, Mississippi, starting before us. Oh, there's always time to make it up, and I feel like we've done a pretty good job of that, so. We have. Just (laughs) But do you know what their membership's like right now, Mississippi? So, God, why are you bringing something Oh, sorry. (laughs) Well, it's because I was looking at it this morning, and had I known they started it, I would have looked, and then that way we could kind of, like, say something about it. So, luckily, they're in our area, because that's what's really important at a national level, and and we'll talk about that in a moment, but... um, Almost 100%. Oh, dang. Well, if you're going to be the ones that started, I guess you got to, you know, lead, so. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we're just lucky that they're uh, within our area because when we vote, we vote together, and they have a very large voice, which I'm really hoping in the next few months our membership can go up. We're having a membership drive right now. So um, with that being said, every member, and it's not the money, it's really not the money that we're asking for. Unfortunately, the money comes with the membership, you know. 
Right. But every 250 people in the state of Arkansas that um, are members, we get one vote at the national level, oh. which is a huge thing. So Mississippi typically runs about 27 to 29 votes to our six. Wow. <laughs> Dang it, but, Arkansas. <laughs> all right. But luckily, we're in the same area. Most of the area discuss how they're going to vote prior to going to the floor mm-hmm. other than at the national conference. So we're all kind of already in agreement. So we do have a for- force, but I would love to see Arkansas have a bigger voice because yeah, when we sure. go up to the Capitol Hill and I can sit in you know, the senator's office and they can go, well, how many members do you have? And when we have over 8,000 soldiers and airmen enlisted, um, and I say, well, we only have 1,200. Well, they look at votes. They're looking, you know, as a congressman or woman, they're looking at votes. And they're only getting 1,200 out of the 8,000. Right. It's kind of sad. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. So membership means a lot, not only in voting at the national level, but when I get the opportunity to sit in the – um, reps in the senator's office. Yeah. When you go up there to talk to um, like the people on the Hill, what do you guys talk about? Like, what are these votes for? Okay, so um, a couple things that they're working on right now. Uh, one of the things is getting TRIACARE uh, reserve select for everybody that's, even if you're dual status. So right now, if you're just a DSG and you're not a technician, you don't have a full-time job out here, you can do the TRICARE uh, select. But if you're out here, you have to do the civilian insurance, like the Blue Cross. Yeah, we all know it's super expensive. But they're working on that right now. And uh, like Sergeant Broadnecks was telling me this morning, it's actually pushed for 2030 right now, but they're trying to push for it to uh, become um What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just sooner, in effect, sooner. So right now, right. yeah, 2030 yeah. is the date. But if we can advance it to where the members can get it sooner, heck, yeah. another win, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I honestly, like, I would say I would do whatever I could to get that because as a civilian, um, a Title 32, I definitely know how expensive healthcare can be. So that would be Right. Yeah, you uh, save a couple hundred dollars every month. Yeah, you know? for me it's like four or five hundred bucks because I have a family plan. Oh, like yeah. it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, membership. Membership. <laughs> More membership, louder voice. Yeah. Hey guys, join, <laughs> join, join. <laughs> if I repeat it three times, that means it's a thing. Right. Um, okay. I think she has a few other. Yeah. Um, okay. Another thing that they're working on right now uh, is increased annual TSP contributions. I don't know on the website. It didn't really say what they were trying to get it increased to. But, I mean, it, you should always be looking out for your retirement, so that's another right. good thing. Um, improved access to mental health care. And then another one, and Air Crew, you're going to want to listen to this one, um, is equal hazardous pay. So I know that they get duty pay right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably know about that because your husband's over there, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like, she's rubbing her hands like, money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so I guess they're trying to uh, make sure that they still get that. So that's another really big thing. Yeah, unfortunately, on the active duty side right now, you know, whatever it is that requires this hazard duty or um, incentive pay, they do it as much as our current guys over here do it, but our guys only get, a, I think it's a third of the yeah. actual pay. So how is that fair if they're both doing it the same amount of time and they're both required to, you know, maintain that? Why are they not getting the full benefit as active duty does? Oh, I agree. Yeah. So uh, See, I, that's didn't even, I didn't even know that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's what this association is about. Yeah. I mean, we not only is our job to serve a state side for the governor, but we deploy just as much, if not more, than the active duty side. And guess what? We're AETC and we train. And yeah. deploy. Right. So it's unbelievable um, of the benefits that active duty has versus us in the Guard that we should have equally. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. I mean, if you work the same amount of hours, you like, honestly, I was active duty for a really long time. And I work more in the Guard <laughs> than I ever did on active duty. No, no slights or anything. Right. But, like, why can't I at least have something equal to what the active duty have, you know, so I totally get it. So you're working with exactly membership (laughs) because you're working with less people. I mean, like your office on the active duty side was how deep? Yeah. 15 to 20 people at any given time. And right now your office is how deep? Two. 
<laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that that's in every single area. So, I mean, why not? And, and remember, their mission is, you know, to deploy mm-hmm. in the country. Well, we have several different of those missions, not only to deploy with them, beside them, but to protect home, right. protect here. Yeah, we have our state mission, right. and we have our federal mission, Absolutely. and we have our training mission. Right. I mean, like, <laughs> let's just go down the list. We should, <laughs> we should, which one you want to talk about? Listen first? to this podcast so they can appreciate <laughs> us a little yeah. bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we pull our weight, right. definitely, and Absolutely. some other people's weight. So, um, okay, cool. Anything else that you know you guys want to talk about as far as what we do, what they do, what you guys support, anything like that, or like maybe some of the stuff that's coming up, or some oh. of the uh, stuff we uh, did you guys offer as far as volunteer services or anything like that? So the really big thing that we're working on right now um, is the Big Dam Bridge Conference next year. Okay. And that's really a time for us to, the entire state, the association, to show off our state and to have all the other states come together and be like, this is our state, this is what we're doing, this is why we're really awesome. But then also some other things that go on are all the states get together and they they vote on things and then they talk about their ideas and they all kind of get on the same page. Um, there's going to be a lot of volunteer opportunities t- for the committee for the junior enlisted night. And then also for fundraising, we just had a food drive. What was it last week? Yeah. And we worked with the officers association on that. So, um, I've been talking to some of the people on rising six and making sure that you can get, everybody can get that information of when there's volunteer opportunities. Okay. Um, and so just look for emails and go to the rising six meetings. <laughs> cool. Is there th- anything on, uh, that you can do for the top three too? Does anything go through them? So absolutely, at, when I sit, when I, I try to go to the top three meetings um, every month, I almost said every year, that was horrible, every <laughs> month um, and promote Ingus at that level too. Actually, just recently, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Chief Rohauer because he assisted me in trying to find a rep within each squadron, flight, section, whatever that looks like for um, them to help be that liaison, that that influencer, if you know, right. if I can say, um, to let people know what Ingus is about, because I think that's what the issue is. They just didn't know. I mean, who knew that back when we didn't even have the right to go to the commissary, but like twelve times a month, you know, yeah. who would have guessed you had to have your little pink card punch to just go in there and shop? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, just the small little things like that. Um, everybody, when y'all file your taxes here in a few months. And you get that big fat state check back. Well, you can thank Ingus for that because they made sure that your um, paycheck was state tax free. And not every state has that. Right. So, I mean, Ingus does a lot of stuff for us. And I think the problem is, is that people would become members if they just knew about it. Right. And knew what it did for them. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, ultimately, that's if I'm going to become a member of any association, what is it that I'm going to get out of it, right? Right. So um, with the reps in each squadron now, I think that word's going to get spread a little bit more. So if you want to get involved at the squadron level, if you want to come and get involved at the state level, heck, if you want to help Ashley with this national conference, we're going to have over, we're talking probably right now, our numbers are talking about 1,400 people. That wow. um, And it might even get more because... Uh, senior enlisted um, are talking about having a joint conference with us. We're not for sure about all that, but yeah. at least 1,400 people. And everybody talks about, still to this day, before our time, the 1997 Arkansas State Conference. And they're just like, uh, I think it was called Hold Whole Hog or in 97 or something like that. And that's all I hear about. They're like, then it's going to be in Arkansas. So yeah. I can already tell that this is going to be an amazing national conference, and um, it's it's going to make everybody wish they were here if they're yeah. not. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited for the junior enlisted, and I think it's going to be really awesome. So our membership right now, as of this morning when I checked, it was 275 people. So how many enlisted do you think we have in our wing? We have 881 approximately. Then why do we only have <laughs> 275 members? That is a good question. Yeah, so that that's, I mean, it just baffles me. Well, maybe um, we could share uh, different ways for people to get in touch with uh, somebody to sign up. How would one sign up for 
E-A-A-N-G, or Ingus, uh, if they wanted to. So it's actually really simple. You can uh, Google E-A-A-N-G-U-S. I spelled that right, right? Okay. Right. And then uh, <laughs> it'll come up. The first thing will be the website, and it'll be the national website, but then you can go down into the tabs and search our state, or it'll g- actually just populate our state, and you can sign up there. And if you have questions, you can go to the Louis- liaisons, or you can come into Calm and say the word Ingus, and everybody will point at Sergeant Broadnecks <laughs> <Yeah>. immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and the good thing is she sits up front, so you right. know, she's not hard She'll to find. She'll probably see them first. So. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, uh, she's like, he looks like he wants to be an Ingus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, why did I even come in here and <laughs> talk to her? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, so it seems like pretty easy if you want to join, and it seems like it'd be very beneficial to join. Is there, like, how much money does it cost for, like, a month or a year, or how, how does that work? Oh, no, I don't, I don't, okay. I'm not sure. So if you, um, from E6 and down, it is $15 a, m- a year. Oh, that's it? It's it. I mean, gosh, you get more money back from your taxes than that, yeah. right? So yeah. $15 a year for E7 and above, it is $30, still a deal. If you'd like to be a lifetime member, it sounds like a chunk, but it's two hundred and fifty dollars. If you get in on that when you're, you know, younger in your military career, I mean, you're going to end up benefiting. However, we can also do a twenty five dollars a month for ten months, and then you're a lifetime member. We also, sorry, have a so um, associate membership. So if you're an officer out there and you're hearing this podcast. It is $20 to um, be an associate member. And I'm just saying, because I'm an associate member of the Officers Association, okay. Lisa could just come and help us and list it out, right? right. She's calling y'all out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as an associate member, what would be a, their responsibility? Literally, it's just giving us support financially. Okay. So, like, when we go up to um, Capitol Hill and stuff, we want to bring younger airmen to watch how the resolution starts and ends with our legislative director up there lobbying for us. And so we like to bring people on these trips that aren't just the board members. Right. um, And it helps fund those trips and um, helps fund our state conferences and national conference. So it just, that money actually helps go back into our funding to uh, do our, you know, our, our stuff at the state level. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, we should do this. Uh, we should do a thing in Com where every time you put in a ticket, we're gonna check to see if you're uh, an Ingus, an Ingus no. member first, and then if you're not, the ticket's gonna be put on the back burner. <laughs> <laughs> so priority to all Ingus yep. members. Oh, that would actually be kind of funny. That's incentive for you, right there. Yep. Not gonna lie. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, is there anything you guys want to talk about that we didn't cover? Uh, don't get me started because I could probably be here oh, all day, I'll literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but okay. if anybody has any other questions, I can break it down. But the biggest thing is if you do, the best place to go to is org. Oh, I think I added an extra A earlier. That's all right. Because right. it's the state association. Yeah. It's two A's. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you if they literally have every everything on there. Okay. But if you have any other questions, you know where to find me. Yep. If you guys have questions, reach out to Sergeant Broadnax or Sergeant Long. They'll be able to help you with anything you might need. If they don't have an answer for you, they can find it. So um, check it out. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it, and I hope everybody takes this information and runs with it. And I look forward to seeing our uh, membership go up. Absolutely. Thank you. you. All right. We are Mission Ready Airmen, providing premier training to the C-130 and cyber enterprises, capitalizing on partnerships to support the state and defend the nation. Our vision is to be a diverse family of airmen, dedicated, adaptive, and empowered to lead.